my name is Munira Hamisi. I'm 26. Well, fortunately, I was born, bred, educated, and I hope I get married in Mombasa. So I love the spicy foods. I also love the ocean. And life is nice. <laughs> my name is Nicolas Songora. I am uh, 29 years old. I love Mombasa and one fact is because I was born and raised here. We have people from different religions, uh, different ethnic groups, different cultural backgrounds. Kenya has a youth bulge. In Mombasa to be specific, our population goes up to a million, 1.5 million, and almost 85% of it is youths. The community kind of uh, see youths as a challenge. They find themselves marginalized. Radicalization has damaged families. During the year 2013-2014, I lost a friend. He was in the mosque when the police came in. They shot several youths and he passed on. He was a close person to me and um, I asked myself, how many youths will we be losing? The Generation Change Fellows Program engages youth who have founded youth-led organizations and are working to build bridges across communities to address challenges related to peace and security. Lonamak was founded by a group of volunteers and our main aim was to capacity build and empower youths in terms of peace and the need for community dialogue. We have been able to implement a number of activities so far. It's still growing. I decided to initiate a youth-led organization known as Manyata Youth Entertainment CBO. We started as a theater-based arts group where they provoke discussions on issues affecting them. We are setting up a youth-friendly cultural center where uh, youth from different background diversity could have our own trainings, could have our own rehearsals at the center, owned by the community and the youth from the community. The Generation Change Fellows Program decided to integrate participatory action research into its curriculum because we believe that youth should be at the front and center of informing the youth peace and security agenda. It's about putting youth at the center of peace building efforts. We wanted to produce knowledge in the community. There's certainly been lots of work around uh, violent extremism in uh, these cities in Kenya but really not from the community level. Usually it's somebody coming in from outside the community doing the research and what they're learning is going to look and sound a bit different than people who are living in the community and experiencing those problems every day. This kind of work has been around for about 40 years now. It's nothing we created but a well-established methodology for working with communities and working with people outside the academy. Kenya was a, a great place to pilot this project. We had a, a series of 12 engagements four of which were face-to-face, -face, and the other engagements we supported virtually. Community youth researchers were involved from the very beginning. The process has seen youths who actually dropped out of school. Some of them have not had any formal education. These are youth who um, are already part of our Generation Change Fellows networks. The youth are given an opportunity to lead in all processes in the study. This gives the youth a chance to do something positive. It's a platform that gives power back to the community. The question that the youth formulated was, what is the role of the community in mitigating youth involvement in violent extremism and juvenile gang groups within Mombasa County? 
we used uh, opening learning circles. We also used world cafes where they would write what they would feel is, is their response. And we also used theatres of oppressed. This process has helped the youth researchers to actually learn more about democracy and active citizenship. So they're engaging parents, they're engaging local government officials, they're engaging um, local humanitarian actors. Everyone is being asked and invited uh, to offer their input as well as a possible solution. Collectively, the process of participatory action research is in itself building peace. Most of the youths are not engulfed in the church. We come up with political instability extreme poverty. The tribalism. Yeah. The data analysis was quite the highlight and it gave out a clear structure of the entire research process. For me, the, the lack of proper parenting skills, that was the most important findings of them all. Police brutality, I remember, was also, I think that was the second in line after poor parenting. If we have police brutality in Mombasa, and it doesn't stop, then we will not see the end of the gangs, neither will we see the end of radicalization. The youth shared the research with the community through a community share back event. It was an audience filled up of every kind of stakeholder that you had touched. It was a 45 minutes play that actually had every finding within one of the scenes. It has a message and it's touching on the people and they feel it. The youths have great talents. They, they do not have a, a good platform where they can um, express their issues easily without fear. We need to engage more and give them that space. I believe the community now have a, a different picture. In all matters concerning the community, you must involve the youth. I learned so much from the part process. It gave me courage. I used to have the low self-esteem uh, as, as far as democracy is concerned. Like, I used to see myself, like, I'm still young, I'm still growing. I feel like I had an influence. I think the government right now, the perception that they have towards the youth has really changed. It's now on the positive side. They would walk up to the deputy county commission and actually book an appointment, meet him, and while they're asking questions, they're having tea, laughing, and we're like, wow, you know. They were seen as experts. They had data, and they could present their data with integrity. At the end of this participatory action research project, the youth published their findings, and that's something really unique that is not seen uh, in the youth peace and security space very often. The report really helps in advising interventions or possible recommendations. I think uh, participatory research is what every government should use. Mombasa has unique problems that will require unique solutions. And when you have data, people understand that this is actually supported. So they, when they present it to government leaders, to foundations, to NGOs, to international organizations, there's a clear process for how that knowledge was created. And it's also put into a format that's accessible and, and recognized by these official organizations. To my organization, Pastoral Action Research is a part of our program now. We use it as a, our research methodology. Our youth have an opportunity for them to make their own promises on what they are going to immediately start doing to influence the change that is needed. Lonamark is using participatory action research. The pledges that the youths made were one to, to try and change the, the findings into positive narratives. They pledged to actually work with mamas, help them to, to bring up their sons, how to strengthen their families. It has been one of the greatest uh, experiences for me as a peace practitioner. I got a job at the county government, which I'm actually really happy about. I'm the director for prevention and countering of violence extremism. My dream is to exist in a society that is one, peaceful, two, there's respect for human rights, and three, the citizenry is actually empowered. I'm kind of living my dream 
having young people participate in research work, this is what I always uh, wanted to see. I have more than hope for our youth in Mombasa.